Hey, 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 awesome people. Welcome back. Mr. C here with you. We are continuing our fractions series. Make sure if you learn anything new, click the like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. In this video, we are going to be comparing two fractions with different denominators. All right, we are going to focus on comparing two fractions that have different denominators. This is going to be a really important skill, so I'm glad you're tuning into this. In the description below, you will find all of our fourth grade videos we have done already. That includes equivalent fractions. You will see all of our third grade videos in a playlist below where we compared fractions already. We also talked about equivalent fractions, what fractions are, all different things, and also in the description you'll see the second grade playlist for fractions as well. Make sure you check those out. Get caught up to where we are in this video because we are going to be focusing on comparing two fractions that have different denominators. Let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started on today's first two fractions here, make sure that you have the correct mindset all right growth mindset we talk about it every time that means that you are okay with making mistakes you're okay with the challenge you are looking to get better through your mistakes all right don't give up if you make a mistake don't give it up if it gets difficult okay this skill here can be a challenge at times and the reason it can be a challenge is because it just takes a little bit of time it takes a little bit of slowing down and thinking through it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use our number sense to help us. So as you can see, I've got two different fractions. I've got one third up here and I've got one fourth. And we're going to be using a number line today. That's how I want us to get started with comparing uh, fractions that have different denominators. So notice the denominator in this fraction is three and the denominator in this fraction is four. And what we're going to do is we're just going to show these fractions on the number line. Okay, so what I want you to do is draw your fractions on a number line and then we're going to compare the two. This is a really great way to do this because it allows us to be able to visually see which one is bigger, which one is smaller, or if they are equal to each other. Right now, we do not know because the denominators are different. Okay, one strategy you can use is creating a number line and compare where they are on the number line. Okay, so let's start off with this top fraction, one third. So I'm going to need three equal sections on this number line. All right, so let me do this. There's one, there is two, and here would be three. So right here, if I start at zero and I go over, right here, I'll go ahead and color it in. There we go. Right here is one third. Okay, and if we continue to go with this, then technically this would be, you know, two thirds. And then if we made it all the way over here to one whole, this would also be three thirds. Okay, keep that in mind. Don't forget that stuff. But we are focusing on one third. So here we go. We've got one third. Now let's do the fraction down here at the bottom. How many equal sections do we need to make this number line into? The denominator tells us, and that is four. So we need four equal sections. Here we go. Here is one, two, three, and four. Let me make that last one a little bit further over. There we go. One, two, three, four. Now let me draw in one fourth. Color it in. We went over one of the equal sections. There's one fourth. Remember, this here would be two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths there, but we are only focusing on one fourth. So here we go. We've got our number lines, we've set them up. What do you notice? What do you notice? Do you notice that one third is closer to one? Do you notice? Look at it. Here's one third. 
Here's one fourth. Which one is closer to one? Well, it looks like one third is closer to one. So that kind of tells us some information. What information does that tell us? Okay, so remember we have three different symbols that we're focusing on in the fourth grade standard. We're, we have this symbol, this symbol, and the equal to symbol. All right, so this symbol here is the less than, this symbol is the greater than, and that is the equal to symbol. So if we are talking about these two fractions here, if we are talking about one-third and we're talking about one-fourth, which of our symbols, our comparison symbols, would we put here in the middle? Is one-third less than one-fourth? Is one-third greater than one-fourth? is one-third equal to one-fourth. Look at the number line. This should tell you your answer. And for this one, hopefully, you are noticing it. One-third is greater than one-fourth. One-third is closer to one. That means it is greater than one-fourth. Notice, remember, a way to remember this, this kind of looks like an alligator mouth. The alligator always wants to eat whatever is bigger. That's the way to think about it. The alligator mouth wants to eat whatever is bigger. In this problem, one third is bigger. It's greater than one fourth. All right. So I've got a couple more number line ones I want us to try out. Take a look at this. Rewatch this problem if you need to. And then I want you to try this next one with us. So here is our next problem. We've got two fractions again. We're focusing on using this number line. We've got three-fifths, we've got two-thirds, okay? I want us to do the same thing we just did, okay? Feel free to pause me and try this one on your own, but we're gonna do the same thing that we just did. Notice my number lines are the same length. That's really important because if my number line down here was like half of it, we wouldn't be able to compare these two. All right, make sure whenever you are drawing whatever model, whether that is a number line, whether that's a picture, whether that's circles, squares, whatever you're using, whatever model you use, make sure you draw them the same size. Because if you don't draw them the same size, then you can't really compare. All right, you can't really compare the fractions. The fractions have to be compared on equal size models. Okay, so let's do this. We've got three-fifths here. Let's break three-fifths up on this number line. The denominator tells us how many equal sections. We need five. So here is one, two, three, four, and here would be the fifth one. All right, so we've got three-fifths. So we've got one, two, and three. I'm gonna color that in. Right here is three fifths. Did you get that? Do you see how I got it? If not, rewatch it. Okay. Let's try two thirds. So we're going to need three equal sections. So here we go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Here is one. Here is two. And here is three. All right, so we need two out of the three. There's one, and there is two. All right, let me color this one in so we can see it. Here is two thirds. All right, so I'm actually gonna write two thirds below it. It seems like it's easier to see down there. There we go. So we've got two thirds, we've got three fifths. Take a look at these number lines. What are you noticing on these number lines? What do you notice? First thing we already talked about, the number lines are the same length. That makes it very easy to compare. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing I notice is you can keep track of where I've divided this up. That's really important. Okay, because when you're drawing a picture and listen, I'm not a great artist. You already know that you can see my stuff, but if I drew it to where it was like really hard to read, it would be like very difficult for me to solve this answer correctly. Okay, so make sure when you draw it, you can actually read what's going on. Take your time, slow down. Okay, math isn't about who gets it done first. All right, nobody gets extra points for finishing first. All we care about is getting the correct answer. So slow down. So another thing I notice on this is that these two fractions are very close to each other. 
All right, they're very close. But we're trying to figure out which one is greater than or which one's less than or if they're equal to each other. All right, so our fractions that we have, we have 3 fifths and we've got 2 thirds. And we want to figure out which one or which of these comparison symbols we're going to put here. What do y'all think? What do you think? Is 3 fifths less than 2 thirds? Is 3 fifths greater than 2 thirds? Or is 3 fifths equal to 2 thirds? Looking at our number line, 2 thirds is closer to 1, which means 2 thirds would be greater than 3 fifths, which would tell us that 3 fifths is less than 2 thirds. Notice alligator mouth is eating the bigger number. The way we read this is 3 fifths is less than 2 thirds. All right, there you go. I've got one more problem for us, and this one again, gonna be using a number line. So let's try one more, see if you can get yourself in a good spot to try our practice problems after this. All right, one more for you. All right, last one for you here in this video. We've got two new fractions. We've got 8 tenths and we've got 4 fifths. Feel free to pause me, try this one on your own. Before I get started, I do want to point something out. Something that a lot of times I get asked and want to kind of talk about is a lot of times people will tell me, well, Mr. C, can I just use like one number line? Like I can draw the first part on the top here and then I can draw the second fraction on the bottom here. And I say, yes, you can do that. You can use one number line and show both of your fractions on it. That is totally doable, all right? The reason I don't do it, and I'm sure y'all can probably guess, my drawings aren't always super easy to like keep track of, and I get kind of confused when I see a bunch of things all over something. So for me, it's a lot easier to understand whenever I draw two number lines that have one fraction on each number line. Okay, Some of you, it may not confuse, and that is totally okay, then go for it. Because we all see math a little bit differently, and that is okay. I use two number lines, it keeps me from getting confused as to what all is going on. All right. So, with that being said, let's try these out here. So I've got 8 tenths, I've got 4 fifths. Let's compare these two fractions. I'm going to set up 8 tenths first. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and here would be 10. I need 8 out of the 10, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, and eight. Did I miscount? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did. See, I even I make mistakes. Good thing I'm not giving up though. All right, so right here, I'm gonna color it in, is eight tenths. All right, that's where eight tenths is located at. Now let's do four fifths. Let me change my color to purple. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five. Let's figure out where, where four fifths is on this number line. Here is one, two, three, and four. I'm going to color that in and write it down. All right, so there is our two fractions on a number line. Take a look and see what do you notice. What do you notice? First thing, I hope you notice our number lines are the same length. Really important, that's the only way we can compare these fractions. Our models have to be the same size. Second thing that's really important, notice 8 tenths is right here, 4 fifths is right here. I'm sure you notice that. But do you notice the size of these sections? Do you notice the size? Take a look where my mouse is here. Look at the size between 1 tenth and 2 tenths compared to the size of 1 fifth and 2 fifths. Do you notice how this denominator 5, the pieces are a lot, lot bigger? You see that? The pieces are a lot bigger. For the tenth, 
take a look how much smaller those sizes of the pieces are. That's really important to notice. All right, the larger the denominator, and I've said this before, the, largest the, the larger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. All right, the smaller size sections you get. Four fifths, take a look, the pieces are very big. Eight tenths, the pieces are very small. But what do you notice about where these two fractions are on the number line? What do you notice about that? Because you're probably noticing something really important and you're probably noticing they are at the same exact spot on their respective number lines. Look how close 8 tenths is to 1 and look how close 4 fifths is to 1. These two fractions are in the same spot. So does that mean 8 tenths is less than 4 fifths? Does that mean 8 tenths is greater than 4 fifths? Or does that mean 8 tenths is equal to 4 fifths? And I'm sure you're figuring it out. 8 tenths is equal to 4 fifths. This number line proves it. This number line allows us to take two fractions with different denominators, put them on a number line, and be able to say, these are equal fractions. These fractions are equivalent to each other. We can compare them using this strategy. I love using this strategy to kind of get myself introduced on comparing fractions that have different denominators. I have more strategies coming for you because we all do math a little bit differently. I'm going to give you several strategies to compare fractions that have different denominators. It's going to be awesome. Make sure you tune into those. If you feel really comfortable with this video here, in the description below, you will see our practice problems video. Try those out for a challenge. Remember, growth mindset, we're always looking to get better. We're always using our mistakes, and we're always looking for a challenge. Thanks for tuning into this video today. Make sure if you learned anything new, click the like, click the subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. That's all I have for you today. Mr. C, out.